Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and we are looking at um, the amended charges of um, Namdi Kanda as he heads to the appeal court. Let's take a bit of a background. The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, has approached the Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal to set aside the ruling of the Federal High Court, which retained seven counts charges against him. Kanu was accused of various offences in the 15 counts, including treasonable felony and terrorism offences he allegedly committed in the course of his separatist campaigns. But the judge, Bim Tanyako, struck out eight of the charges in her ruling on Mr. Kano's preliminary objection challenging the validity of the charges. Now, Justice Nyako ruled that count 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 14 were incompetent for not disclosing any valid offenses against the defendant. We have a human rights lawyer joining us, uh, Justice Ohuebu. Many thanks for joining us in this particular discourse, Barrister Ohuebu. Yeah, good morning. It is my pleasure once more. All right, let's talk about uh, this particular uh, development and Namde Kano heading uh, for the appeal court. Specifically, he's asking for seven of the, uh, the many seven count uh, charges to be dropped. You know, but uh, I, when I was trying to read through, you know, what um, his uh, lawyers and um, defense were, that's uh, Barrister uh, Ozekame. He said um, these uh, offenses were purportedly committed outside the country and it makes the court a uh, lacking jurisdiction. How do you reason all of that? Yeah, you see, the issue of uh, Namdi Kalos matter has been a trending one and uh, one that uh, is very, very, how do I put it, classic in a way. Let me put it that Because uh, going from, uh, right from the time the purported arrest or whatever was, was done and all the rest, there was a lot of illegalities as far as I am concerned. But uh, coming to this, the truth is that when a count or a charge is drawn, the charge will definitely state the offense you have committed, where you committed the offense, which is the jurisdiction of the court, where you committed the offense, the time the offense was committed. These are the facts. These are the ingredients that makes up the offense uh, that will, 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 will be bared in the charge. But in this kind of situation, I think the lawyer was right by saying that uh, nothing of such nature has happened. First of all, uh, the purported offense was uh, said not to have been committed in Nigeria because the offense has never said that Nam de Kalo committed so 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 offense in Lagos or in Abuja or in so so time and in so so in, in so time and with one fact or the other. So let's be realistic to ourselves. I think this whole game is just playing politics with it as far as I'm concerned. Because as far as I'm concerned, once an offense is not committed within the jurisdiction of the court, that court lacks jurisdiction to entertain that matter. And that is what Ozokomo is trying to tell the court. Now, if you look at it holistically now, they, they brought this application, and the courts expunged eight out of the 15 uh, count charge, leaving seven. Now, those seven you left, would, would, would the court also assume jurisdiction so that at the end of the day, it will not be an effort in futility? As far as I'm concerned. Okay, uh, let's talk about what the law, the position of the law as regards an appeal to uh, terrorism charge or charges. In this case now with Namdi uh, Kanu. The truth is that you have right of appeal at any point in time. Once a ruling or a judgment has been made and you are dissatisfied with that ruling or judgment, you go and appeal. We have, a, we have it up to the third up to the third floor, which is the Supreme Court. So the whether the validity or not, the question you should be asking yourself, Nam Kali is pursuing his legal right and his right in going on appeal. Any appeal, any matter, or any judgment or any ruling that you feel that the court has not dispensed justice as it should be, that there is a miscarriage of justice, you definitely go on appeal. So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's look at this from another dimension, still talking about the issue of um, jurisdiction. You know, for his defense counsel uh, claiming that um, if uh, the, the case were to be had in a court in Nigeria, the court would be assuming a global, you know, uh, jurisdiction. So 
ordinarily, what would the, what should the federal government be doing if it actually wants to pursue this case logically? Is, is, a, is it only that I don't know? The federal government, I, like, like I said before, as far as I'm concerned, they're just using Nam Carlo's case to play politics. For me, I don't see any charge against Nam Carlo. I have said this several in so many other media houses. I don't see any charge against They are only playing politics with this. But let me tell you this, you see, if actually a crime was committed, or purportedly committed. Remember that even by our law, even by the Constitution, 1990 Constitution as amended, an accused person is still presumed innocent until found guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction. Now, in this kind of situation, now we do not say that the court is competent when the jurisdiction of the court is being challenged. Now, you see, these things are simple. If actually that the federal government felt that Nandikala has one case or the other to answer for any reason, as at the time Nandikala was arrested, where was he supposed to be taken to? Which passport was he holding? Was he holding the passport of Nigeria as a Nigerian citizen? Or was he holding the passport of British passport as a British citizen? And if a purported crime is committed by any person in any foreign country, other than the country where he, he, he committed the offense, the best thing to do is to seek for extradition and take the person back to the country where he's coming from. And there is always this international treaty and cohesion between countries. The person can be tried here if actually a crime was committed. So um, the, the next question would be, now, what would be the implication if, uh, I mean, his, his appeal has not been considered? Is there a tendency that his appeal cannot be considered? Well, I wouldn't want to preempt the appeal. Because, uh, like we said, the matter is still stop judges. But the truth is this: I foresee we are a situation where even if the appeal uh, uh, is quashed, the top floor is there. The Supreme Court there is there for them to go to the Supreme Court, which will be the final arbiter. And uh, of course, if the Supreme Court feels otherwise, I know the appropriate place to go now is to appeal to God. All right, as well, let's still talk more about um, the implications of all of this. So far, the court um, has actually, you know, squashed uh, or quashed uh, eight of these uh, charges, and uh, there's still left of, of seven. You know, what does this really tell about um, the uh, the carriage of justice right now? Is it that uh, uh, the prosecution is not actually doing due diligence before just uh, going to court with all of this? Uh, charges some people have actually described as convoluted? Well, the truth is that that is a problem we have in our judicial system in Nigeria. You see, we have always said this, that um, it's not a matter of prosecution or police or the anti graft agency or whatever agency rushing to court. You must prepare yourself very, very well, one. Because cases are won and cases are lost in chamber before you go to court. The court is not a federal Christmas. The court must look at the whole thing holistically with the enabling laws in order to make sure that he will determine the matter in his marriage. So most times in Nigeria, I have to tell you the truth, the prosecution are not always tidy. They don't tidy their cases in the first place. Now, let me, let, let's see it this way. What is the essence of you rushing to court when you know that at the end of the day, the court will not assume jurisdiction or the court will lack jurisdiction to attend such matter and all the rest. And we have even seen in the past, like EFCC and some other grab law agents, they will bring 150 count charges, 200 count charges. At the end of the day, they cannot even substantiate one. So what does it go to show? It goes to show to an extent the, how they have the, 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 you know, not that having that full capacity of doing the needful or, you know, the only problem I see here is that, um, like I said earlier, we play politics with everything. Once um, the government is interested in anything, one way or the other, they will take the matter to court and begin to, you know, the prosecution will begin to look for a way to delay matters and all the rest. For me, it's not healthy for our judicial system. And this is one of the things we have been complaining in our judicial system. Because for now, I don't see the reason why somebody will be charged to court and the person is just still being in, 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 in custody for one year, two years, getting to three years without anything being done on the matter, one thing or the other, and the matter will come to court, uh, 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 an adjournment will be taken for one month, two months. Well, where are we going? I, 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 we're not supposed, if I were supposed to have gone past this, as far as I'm concerned. 
we must at this point in time tell ourselves the truth in this country especially in our judiciary the judiciary must rise up to be the last hope of the common man which is said to be all this why and unfortunately fortunately or unfortunately let me put it that way um i don't know where we are going because um if the judiciary one way or the other gets it wrong at this point in time i am afraid our country is heading to nowhere. So what I'm trying to say is this. Uh, as, as a member of judiciary, as an adjudicator, as a judge or whatever, we are, or you are supposed to live above board. It does not matter whose orb is there. And that is why I keep on saying, if you remember, I, I keep on saying that, do we actually have independence of judiciary in Nigeria? And the answer is no. Because if the governors of various states still appoints judges of high state high courts. The president appoints the federal high court judges, court of appeal, and the supreme court. So what do you expect? They will, the executive will continue having influence, mm. and at times it makes it difficult for some of these judges to dispense justice with or without favor. Uh, so, but let's even come back, you know, to the crux of this conversation. If we say that. I mean, uh, the crime that's committed was not within uh, the country, and as such, the court does not have the jurisdiction. Why is the court going ahead? That's the number one question. And secondly, um, if you say that he's been, I mean, which we should also have a connection, he's been detained unlawfully, then why is still the court, you know, even attending or entertaining, you know, the case that is not within its jurisdiction? You see, the truth is that by, by our laws, once a matter is brought to court, the court must look at the matter and hear the matter on its merit. And it's at that merit that the court will now determine whether it's a jurisdiction in the first place to entertain the matter or not, like this kind of matter and some other matters in court. And that is why, for example, in several matters, when a matter goes to court, what the lawyers will look at is, do this court actually have jurisdiction to entertain this matter? You will not start talking about jurisdiction before the matter comes to court. The matter must have gone to court first and pleadings exchange before you now start raising the issue of jurisdiction or whatever. So that is exactly what is playing here. But my own concern is that it's, it's taking late. It's taking too long. If the courts... The court should do the needful at this point in time. Looking at the whole thing holistically, let me give you, let me tell you this. There's nothing wrong in the court looking at the whole situation before it, for any matter brought before the court to do the needful without having influence anywhere. If a matter is bad, it is incredibly bad. There's nothing we can do about it. Because Lord Denny said in the case of Matfoy against USC that you cannot place something on nothing and accept it to get balanced. He said it will definitely collapse. So, but uh, l let's come back to it. When you say the law has actually stated, are you talking about the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Or is this a universal law? Because, I mean, these cases would continue to happen if we don't do anything about it. Yes, by the rules of court, by the rules of court, and also by the constitution. That is why the constitution says that an accused person is presumed innocent until, until proving guilty. So when somebody is charged to court for a purported offense, that's why we say purported, because as at that time it has not been proved. The court will look at it, the court will hear it, and one of the things the court will look at is such application now that is being filed by your government to say that the court lacks jurisdiction to entertain this matter because in the face of it, and of the offense has not been properly placed before the court as at when, where, and the time. Now, if an offense is committed, is not committed within the jurisdiction of the court, can the court now assume jurisdiction over that matter? So these are legal matters, and it is left for the court to decide. No, no, I, we totally understand. I mean, of course, these laws are not made by spirits. The laws are made by man and uh, not man. I mean, the laws are made for man and so man for the law. So it therefore means that these laws can be amended. So we don't get into all of the circle. Because at the end of the day, you have a lot of people who would say that this is totally unfair. Uh, like you always say, I mean, we cannot begin to predict, uh, you know, the outcome of what the, the judgment would be at the end of the day. But we're saying that at the end of the day, there's something fundamentally wrong. Like we have, you have rightly established that it is not within the court's jurisdiction 
why can't we have the law be very explicit on this? So we don't even have to, you know, go in this, you know, same circle and trying to understand the legality or whether or not a court has, you know. So why don't we have the law being very explicit? You see, I have to tell you the truth. It's not that we don't have the law being explicit or being direct or being simple. Do you understand? But at times, uh, these things are played like a game. And that is why I told you that most times we play unnecessary politics. We bring politics into so many things we are doing, especially when the executive is, has interest in one matter or the other and other. But it's not supposed to be so. Because for all, as far as I'm concerned, many people have faulted the constitution that is it, it, it has problems. Yes, I, I believe and I agree that there are a lot of lacunas in the constitution. But the truth is this. If we follow the constitution as it is, simplicity, even 70% will not be having the problems we're having today. All right, Barista Uwegu, Barista Uwegu, let me try and understand that uh, I'm trying to get all that you have said and uh, try to pick um, from what uh, Mercy has said. I know in the United States and some other countries, uh, um, a case does not just go you know, into hearing just like that. Before now, you know, they have, there are things like um, pre-hearing uh, trial you know, to find out if a case can actually go for trial. Do we have like, such situations here in Nigeria? Yes, I think we do, especially on the civil aspect part of it where we have what we call the pre-trial conference and all the rest. But in our criminal system, in our criminal legal system, uh, we, we've not actually begin to explore that area. Just like what is happening now is what we call the preliminary stage in the, in, in the court system. Filing of applications, bell applications, and our looking interlocutory applications, and all the rest. That is exactly what is happening now because the, the court has not even gone to the matter as it is. And because at the stage we are now, any person charged, whether, a, a, for example, in a criminal matter, we call them charged, in civil matters, we call them suits, you know, taken to court. The lawyers will look at it holistically whether this place you're taking this person, do the courts actually have jurisdiction to entertain this matter or not? So you can't keep quiet. You have to do the need for the first remuneraries before getting to that. So the American system may be different from our own. Every country has its own legal system, different from others. But like I told you, in the, uh, in the civil aspect, we have such provision, the Pretoria Conference and other. But in the criminal, uh, 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 system here. We don't have simplicity such a procedure. And that is why if somebody is arrested in Nigeria for any purported crime or offense, the next thing they charge the person to court. You know, and it, it is now in the court that you begin to find out or discover whether the person was properly charged, whether the charge against the person is proper or incompetent, whether the, person, the court lacks jurisdiction to, to, to even bring the matter to court and all the rest. So, like you said, I think there should be a system where we may have a, a pre trial before charging somebody to the court to first trial so that some of these things, you know, can be dealt with at the preliminary level before the matter comes to court, especially in order to avoid delay, unnecessary delay. All right. Uh, just one final question for you, Barrister Huigbo, as we wrap up. As it is right now, aside from going to the appeal court uh, to quash uh, these remaining charges, uh, uh, does he also have the right, that is, uh, Namdi Kano, maybe to seek uh, some sort of uh, justice in terms of um, unfair treatment? Yes, of course. Of course, the, the Constitution Simplista provides that you can go to court to seek for enforcement of your fundamental human right. When your rights have been infringed, when your rights is about to be infringed, or when your right is likely to be infringed, the, the, these are three things. It's a trinity prayer there. It's a trinity thing. So if at the end of the day, that is why at times you see some people that are charged to, that are arrested by the police, maybe brutalized or anything, or even charged to court. They file fundamental human rights applications to say, no, I am not, I have been melted with, with injustice. You're not supposed to treat me this way because of so many things. There is right, right to dignity of life. There's right to so many things. You, you cannot arrest somebody and begin to brutalize that person, treat that person like a human, uh, an animal, and all the rest. These things are 
in our laws and the police and the uh, anti graft law agents in Nigeria, they know all this. In fact, there's even what we call judges' rule. They also know, saying, stating the way and the modus the police should extract evidence from people. You're not supposed to beat somebody while trying to get a statement from the person or extract evidence from the person. So that is the problem we are saying. I don't know in Nigeria whether we are in the 21st century or whether we are still in the 1st century. We are not getting it right at all, like other, other, other countries. And let me tell you the truth. Like uh, 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 um, Lord Denis said also in the case of Parker versus Parker, he said, until we start doing what we have not done before, we will remain stand still while the rest of the world moves on. So we must begin to do all those things we have not done before. And what are all those things? Right to, human, to, 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 uh, to, to fundamental human rights. Let's respect the fundamental human rights of people. Fundamental human rights is divine. It is given by God. Everybody must enjoy it. That is just the thing. And that is why in the Western world you're making reference to. They don't play with it. It is only in Africa and especially in Nigeria that people don't respect human rights of others. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Barista Justice Uwek. But we'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much for all the thought that uh, you have shared concerning this latest development. Thank you. It is my pleasure once more. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time now for us to take a quick break and we'll come back with we'll talk on more issues affecting the policy in a moment. Stay with us.